Somewhere in the dry, barren West Texas desert, a group of guys who are refusing to look at this week's price chart have given birth to a Bitcoin miner farm that runs on excess flare gas from an oil pipeline. The flare gas mine with Musk miners. Dozens of Bitcoin miners, S19s and S19J Pros, are reaching the end of their global circumnavigation, their 7,100 mile journey to arrive here at this specifically outfitted shipping container, the Hindsight 180. Today marks Musk Miner's opening volley in the fourth Bitcoin mining epoch, which began on block 630,000 and will extend to the halvening in 2024, when the 840,000th piece is added to the blockchain. It was a 20-hour drive to hand deliver five of my S19J Pros over to the boys at Musk Miners to be remote hosted in their custom shipping container. Joining me on this trip across Texas, fellow YouTuber and Luna millionaire, that's number of Luna tokens, definitely not the value of those tokens. It's your friend Andy. Hey Andy, welcome to the Space Warehouse Studio. Hello, it's me. I'm a Luna millionaire in that I yeah. have three cents worth of Luna, but it's actually oh. millions of Luna. This is not the top, speaking of Luna, this isn't the topic of today's video, but it is topical. And it might've been what kicked off this week's little flash crash. I don't even know. But since I consider you to be a relative expert on the subject of Luna, and I heard about it about four days ago for the first time, can you talk real quick as if you were explaining to a car mechanic, what is UST like when you compare it to maybe like USDC? So UST is like if you have a carbureted engine where the exhaust manifold is straight pipes instead of curved pipes. UST is US TerraCoin, which is uh, the Luna ecosystem stable coin, but instead of USDT or USDC, which are back one to one, apparently with actual US dollars in a reserve account. UST has no backing. It is purely algorithmic. It has a relationship with the Luna token and that you are incentivized to either buy or sell one or the other, depending on the price of one or the other. And that's what maintains the peg. However, it is now completely catastrophically broken and probably permanently failed. Was it a coordinated attack like I read somewhere or was that just, that's just something? No, it was 100% a coordinated attack. It was, uh, it was the uh, Luna team um, moving uh, all of their liquidity from one pool to another as they were upgrading everything. And it was in that moment, that decisive moment that someone deployed about 350 million UST. They withdrew them from the pool, which basically drained what was left in the pool. And that started the DPEG cycle. And then it was a bunch of ser a series of things after that that just continued to uh, DPEG it further. A couple of days ago, the entire supply of Luna was 300 million tokens. And today it is 7 billion tokens. That's okay. That explains that. Back to Bitcoin mining. <laughs> when internet people talk about mining, GPU mining or Bitcoin mining, we'll make jokes like we're going down into the mine and I'll like spit on the floor on my way into the she shed or I'll put on a hard hat for the thumbnail. But normally crypto mining takes place in a clean place. I mean, obviously with computer parts doing their thing, the last thing you want to see is dirt and dust and grit and sweat. This morning, for instance, I spent like eight minutes scrubbing and brushing my boots because it looked a bit like I just went off to go work in the oil fields. Anyway, that is to say it's dirty in West Texas. Thus is the way of the oil man. Andy and I went way out into the desert in Texas to check out this remote hosting Bitcoin mining facility that you're seeing on the screen right now. That's From the waist down, uh, it's tank treads and robot parts. <laughs> I'm I'm Johnny yeah. Five from the hips down. There you go, Johnny number five. Right. He's alive. Thanks, Andy. Thanks for coming over to the to the warehouse, even though I'm not in the warehouse. Thanks for allowing me into your warehouse garage slash garage warehouse. I shut down the hurricane room, disconnected all of my miners, rolled them onto the truck and packed them away. Where I drove five of my six S19J Pros all the way from Florida to West Texas, only stopping to pick up this other YouTuber guy on my way. Me and paper towels. <laughs> so I could once again see Musk Miners operation firsthand and to be able to confirm for the Bitcoin mining curious that this operation is in fact real and does exist. Also, total sidebar, I'm in New York City now, but that doesn't have anything to do with any of this. After hours of driving further and further away from civilization, we pulled up and got our first look at the Bitcoin container. Andy and I put our ASIC miners on the shelves ourselves, while Blake, Chris, and their team continued hooking up the network, dialing in the ventilation, and configuring machines. This isn't even a term you say very often, but between your machines and my machines, once we get all these things turned on, we have 1.2 petahash. Petahash. 1.2 petahash on the SHA-256. Bitcoin mining 
past the envelope burning through the sound barrier. One of the things people who don't like the concept of Bitcoin or cryptocurrencies in general are talking a lot about right now is the amount of electricity the network consumes. It's a valid concern, particularly with some of the more vulnerable places in the world and also Texas. These machines, of course, take a lot of power to run. If pollution is the concern, then moving Bitcoin mining to more renewable sources like hydro or solar or wind should ease those worries. And actually, a probably now outdated research paper done by CoinShares showed that 74% of Bitcoin mining already happens with renewable sources. But if that is your main concern, if pollution is your main concern, then flare gas, the thing this farm is running off of, is part of the answer. You certainly wouldn't think burning natural gas to make power would be a green source of energy. And you'd be right, because it isn't. Except that burning this gas is green, or what I've been calling green adjacent. Let me explain. No, there is too much. Let me sum up. During the pumping and pipelining of oil, pipelining, natural gas is introduced into the line as well. If those oil men let too much of that gas build up in the line, kaplow. Everyone dies and no one gets oil. So instead, they tap it. They divert that dirty natural gas. Evidently, it's mixed with a bunch of other gas and other things I can't remember. And they run it into a pipe that sticks up in the air and they simply light it on fire. That's the solution. It burns like this 24 hours a day. This is called flare gas, and it's gonna exist for as long as we use oil for stuff, which is probably the rest of my life. But what this Bitcoin company has done, and what quite a few other companies have done, is to get permission from the oil folks to tap another line into that flare gas line. And they run that gas through a set of generators to produce a megawatt of power. Then plop down a specially designed shipping container that can somehow survive the American desert in the summertime, and use up all that power mining Bitcoin. The reason this can be considered green is because this flare gas will be set off off into the atmosphere no matter what. We can't stop it. As long as we use oil for things, flare gas will continue to be burnt off into the sky, but we can give it one more thing to do on its way out. What that means is this sort of power generation and Bitcoin mining adds zero extra carbon into the atmosphere. It simply sketches a ride like Marty McFly in the back of a blue 1980s pickup truck that's already shooting out of this pipe. These sites are extremely remote and typically far away from the electrical grid. So it's not like they can just run these generations and send that power into the grid, which would be really nice. In order to make any sort of use of this nearly free gas, there needs to be some densely packed operation that doesn't need any connection to the outside world except maybe a satellite internet feed and that can consume lots of power. One megawatt of power continuously day and night. That's one million watts of power. If you're unclear about just how much power that is, it's equal to 111,000 typical household light bulbs, or a little over 200,000 fish tank pumps, 4,761 RTX 3080 graphics cards, that's 10,000 MacBook Pro chargers going at once, or a little over 22,200 Segway 9-bot scooter chargers. That's so many scooter chargers. Meet Blake Griner from Musk Miners. He let me and my friend, fellow YouTuber, your friend Andy, come out there while they turn this thing on for the first time. Andy's making a video of this trip as well. I'll link it right up here as soon as I have that. After we got there, Blake walked me through the mining farm container and its parts. Good to see you here. We have a one megawatt container that we just electrified. We're super excited. We got 300 S19 capacity in it. We're loading it up slowly. Incrementally, so we have this big gen set over here, 430 kW. So we have a lot of slots left. Come host with us. Ooh, I like that. Let's go inside. This is your friend Andy. Hello. You've made it like eight minutes into this video. You're basically pot committed at this point. Could you just reach over really quick and badoop that subscribe button if you're not already? Andy's channel is five times bigger than mine, and that tiny little button push from you could get me going on a jetpack joyride to even things up over here at the YouTube break room. I know you might be watching on mobile and you'll have to turn your phone to the portrait orientation to hit the button. Right now you see we have a V-shaped racking, guys, and that's gonna give us that hot and cold aisle. We're gonna rack the miners in a way that allows them to blow all the hot air into the exhaust fan V, right? So I can walk in here and this is where all the hot air is gonna be. We're gonna close this door off right here so that we can get that airflow to go poof, right out, all that heat. And then it's going to, that fan is so powerful, it's going to continue to pull air along the sides, which allow for that fresh air intake, right? That's where this is. So these designs, right, very similar to a data center, which is pretty much what we're running, except we're making money, it's designed perfectly for that, right? And obviously that door is gonna seal off. This is just a a monster size air intake, the whole entire thing is an air intake. Absolutely, and these are just these are just giant filters, right? They're gonna be changed really frequently. It's something that you have to work with. Total of six V shapes with 12 aisles. Each aisle can hold approximately 25 S19s. And so this area is gonna be open. It's sucking in cold air through there, through the miners, getting shot out the other side with this giant fan. 
Correct. All the hot air is inside there, right? And all the hot air that is produced by these things goes right in there and then it gets sucked right out. So everything that's getting sucked in here is fresh air, right? And that's beautiful because we want cooler air going in and hot air getting out. Yeah, so it's only hot behind that door. This It's not hot where we're standing in here at all. Correct. That's the hot and cold aisle, right? We're in the cold aisle. Yeah. Hot aisle's in there. So this plant right here is an LNG facility, a liquid natural gas producing facility, and they have loss. About 10% loss goes into that flare line right there. And instead of just burning it off, we did something cool and we put it into the line, ran it to that big generator over there, turned this bad boy on, created a bunch of electricity. We were able to use the electricity to power all of our miners in there. Right now he's only got 98 on these racks, but all of these are gonna be full. They're gonna have 300 S19s in here. Pulling a megawatt of power. In order to power the container, we had to use certain connections and what we ended up using were called cam lock connections using DLO cable. And they're fed into this huge electrical doghouse that we had to fabricate specifically for this operation. 600 amp disconnects that are used for service entrances for each gen set. And we have six different ones. They're big, bad boys. Can we just talk real quick about these three 600 amp fuses? This is the largest fuse that I have ever seen. They can get power this way for super cheap, as long as they use enough of it. Which means, if you're a person who's in a position where you think Bitcoin mining is something you'd like to get your hands on, but maybe you live in an apartment complex or your electrical rate is just too high to make it profitable, so you might think you just can't take advantage of this little financial revolution, remote hosting is a way where you can pay significantly less than the national average rate for electricity and you won't have to deal with all the heat and noise that a Bitcoin miner makes. I made a video all about the realities of running a Bitcoin miner. I'll link it right here. You also won't have to do any maintenance on the machines or worry about changing air filters or really do anything other than watch the number of Bitcoins in your account grow. You can chat directly with the Musk Miners team in my Discord. They have their own little section in there. Link in the description. These guys can also sell you hardware that you can run at home and they'd love to. Their company is not strictly a remote hosting site. Musk Miners is where I buy all of my Bitcoin mining hardware and I'm hosting most of them at their Texas mining facility. Now. Also in the description, let's just whip these out because the description is such a good resource. I'm on a podcast with Andy. You can find it in the link below. Also, you can invest in fractional shares of real art masterpieces. They're recession proof through Masterworks. Link in the description. And finally, you can join the Sleep Money Club. I'm a member and I'm in there chatting from time to time. They have a bunch of passive income investment advice, whitelist opportunities for new things, and just a bunch of like-minded folks with no spam and no bots. Link in the description, link in the description, link in the description. That's all the links I have for the description. Or babe. Just the oh, original yeah? babe. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. The guy from Babe. You know uh -huh. that movie that yeah. I watch. You a know, lot. didn't Babe win an Oscar? Pretty sure Babe won an Oscar. <laughs> Pretty sure Babe is from the nineties. It is. You looking this up? Yeah. It won for best visual effects in nineteen ninety six. Wow. It was a, it was nominated for best picture. Best Director, Best Supporting Actor, Best Adapted Screenplay, Best Art Direction, what? Best Film Editing, and Best Visual Effects, in uh, which it won. I might have to watch Babe on the plane tomorrow. Babe's a pretty good movie. You should, <laughs> you should watch Babe.